My name is Nadia Sandra. I'm the uh, Marcellus representative for Earthworks Oil and Gas Accountability Project. And thank you very much for coming to Pennsylvania. And um, as you know, we have a lot of issues with the um, under-regulation and lack of accountability in the part of the gas industry. We will be submitting comments on that. But tonight I'd like to read a statement from a landowner in Bradford County, um, Carol Knapp, who owns a uh, organic dairy farm. And he says the following, our experience with the land leasing process to energy companies has been a roller coaster. We had no idea of things to come. We were never told what it would be like. Um, these operations qualify as an industrial site, and we all know now that this drilling activity is not our grandmother's well pad. Our family has dedicated a large portion of their lives into maintaining, improving, and caring for the land. Seeing the industry bulldoze their way into our communities has been difficult to witness. Jobs are important to areas that have been economically deprived for a long time, but these are jobs that won't last for long and that are hazardous both in equipment and chemicals. How many jobs does it take to justify the loss of a person's constitutional right to pure water, to breathe clean air, and to grow untainted food? For me, not one job is worth that loss. How many is it worth for you? We were sold a dream of improving our life by gas company representatives, and instead for us and many others, we've come to live a nightmare. Shale gas development is destroying the quality of life that drew our family here. The availability of untreated water, clean air, and fertile soil that has nourished so many is priceless. All of these things are being threatened and far too many people have been, and it has vanished with far too many people. My 11-year-old son asked where are we going to get away from this and back to the place where there, are, where there is no drilling. For the sake of my children and grandchildren and their future generations, please don't allow mistakes similar to those in the past. We are supposed to be learning from them, not repeating them. At the very least, the long-term cumulative effects on communities, the environment, and local economies must be assessed before the gas companies are allowed to continue down their current path. We cannot sacrifice our homes for greed, and we the people are not expendable.
much to us shale gas wells in our area. They're complaining of illnesses they did not have prior to the introduction of these wells into our local area. If my voice sounds weak, it is. I have constant sore throats and acute bronchitis. My doctors say they do not know what's wrong or what to do. One doctor said many people are complaining of these same symptoms. After researching the Marcella Shale Wells, he tells me he's leaving the area as soon as possible. There are about 30 or more wells near my home. 12 are within a quarter of a mile. People in the area have memory loss, confusion. They can't remember words when they're speaking. They have neuropathy and fatigue. I suffer from these symptoms also. It's not just because I'm 73 years old. The companies Atlas, Chevron, and Williams have greatly affected our quality of life. There are unexplained odors in the air. We have a list of a page and a half of chemicals that are in the air around my home. I would like to sit on my porch with my husband at this age and just enjoy the fresh air in the evening, but we're not comfortable sitting out there anymore. We heard sounds like jet planes taking off from our front yard. Underground explosions. We were sitting in the dining room and we hear this explosion and we say, what was that? We don't know. So we called the DEP. Where are they? What happened to the DEP? We got no answers from anybody. What was the explosion that moved underneath my home on February the 11th? I know my time's up, but the Chief River, the Mon River, the Allegheny River are all, are all impaired. They're all impaired with chemicals. I firmly believe that the Ohio River Valley, the Allegheny River Valley, and the Monongahela River Valley, and the Chief River Basin Valleys are in jeopardy. Regulate now. Somebody do something. <laughs> Everyone lied. 
I'm tired of the lies. I want these guys to work. I want them to have families. I don't want anybody to be out on the street getting beat up and, and having, you know, down times and, and all the sad economics that come along with it. But there's a problem. I had my garage broken into from a roughneck. And I heard a man there talking from Universal. I, they defecated all over my property. A number of guys have worked on, on, on the well sites. And the guys building the locations. I've got photographs of it. I went to the, up to my garage the one day after they, they finished it. Oh, i got to finish this. After they finished the fracking, because, again, I was the second one. I'm picking all the garbage up. Now, I just came from church. I'm picking everything up. Well, naturally, I'm picking up papers and tissue and this and that, and I'm just upset. What do you think I picked up? The guy went to the bathroom eight feet from my garage right on a 2B stone. I mean, come on. Where are we, for heaven's sakes? I'm my name is David Meyer, and I'm from Track Free Lunchburg with Marcellus Protest, MarcellusProtest.org. And I'd like to say, if I had a dollar for every time I heard a corporation say, trust us, we care, only to find out that, well, you know, they were lying, I'd be a millionaire. But even if I were a millionaire, that would only be one sixteenth the amount of money that Rich Tillman makes from the head of Exxon Mobil, the wealthiest corporation in the world, which is actually buying up gas companies around Pittsburgh, excuse me, around the Western Pennsylvania. But I feel like we're experiencing a kind of collective memory loss and confusion. Not only is fracking affecting people individually, it's affecting us collectively. How many people here remember the names that Rachel Carson was called when she complained about DDT? Finally, just 10 years have passed. How many people remember uh, the names that Erin Brockovich were called and the threats against her love? And she was complaining about the hexavalent chromium pollution and Pacific, oil, uh, Pacific Gas and Electric said, oh no, we never pollute. We're a really responsible company. Right. How many people remember Love Canal and the residents there complaining about dioxin? I remember a sign, seeing a sign there, I'm not here. I have better things to do than be contaminated. Well, an activist who's not being paid to be here, but is concerned about the future of the people, of the planet, and indeed, well, indeed the entire planet? Yeah, I have much better things to do than try and stand up to the gas industry. And finally, how many people remember, like, how safe nuclear power is? Or how safe oil to keep oil shell drilling is? Well, I'd like those people to go pay a visit to uh, the Gulf of Mexico. You know, there's a dead zone there the size of New Jersey. Or how about visit, you know, Fukuyama, Japan, where there's like two, uh, 18 to 20 miles of residents that can't go back to their home. Right. Well, do we want to see this in Pennsylvania? Do we want to see our website? fuels in the ground. It's not gas versus coal or gas versus oil. Gas, oil, no. Wind, solar, yes. what the gas industry is doing to these archaeological sites protected by a National Historical Code was passed in 1966. Right. Along with our Pennsylvania Constitution, Article 1, Section 27, says in that it must provide the pure air, clean water, and aesthetics. For this generation and generations to come, those are archaeological historical sites, ladies and gentlemen. I spoke last year in front of the EPA and I'm working right now to try to get these sites protected, and I think they should be protected. We have a constitution, it is a law of the state of Pennsylvania, and it must be followed by the letter of the law. If I broke it, if I or anybody else in here would broke a uh, law, wouldn't we go to jail? If we if killed somebody, we'd go to jail. And being a combat Marine, I am, gentlemen. I fought for the rights of my freedom and the freedom of the people of the United States, in the state of Pennsylvania, and it is my right to learn what's in my backyard when it comes to archaeology or history. Thank you very much. My name is Jeannie Carr. I'm stuck again for Mary Grace to tell us where I can take her position. I am from Fayette County, Pennsylvania. Thank you for hearing us today. I'd like to 
walk you through a day in my shoes on the Hope Hall Road. 350 feet from my home sets a compressor station with drip tanks, reboilers, dehydrator. I feel like my home, my yard that once was peaceful and safe was, as I was a child, is, is noisy. If you don't steal my yard that I once played in, and as a small child, it's not safe for my children. The gas industry has destroyed my peace of mind. From the noise, to the fumes, to the breaking out, to my kids with high blood pressure, to them having stuff up their noses, and things on their skins. No, the people were left with no one. Not the fire department, not the health department, not the CDC could even help me or my family. No, I did, honey. But it's too late for me and my family. But we can save others if we start now. How far are we willing to go before it's too late? You realize that this is not the best source of energy? We can explore. Oh, yes. God has blessed us with air and water. Please don't destroy them. And the lady from Germany that said that people get emotional, you're damn right I get emotional. <laughs>
name is John Atherton, I'm a PhD, and I'd like to talk about property values. Risk alone lowers property value. Accidents destroy what's left over. Fracking directly threatens property values throughout the entire shale region because fracking risks are real. Public record documents fracking risks, but more important to this point here, banks react to fracking risks. Published reports show major banks are refusing to provide mortgages for homes with shale leases. If you have a shale gas lease, you cannot sell your, your property to most buyers. That is, anyone who needs a mortgage. Even homes without gas shale lease for fr fracking is already going to reduce your property value. For example, my wife uh, uh, talked about Beaver Run, Run Rev Reservoir. It provides water for 80,000 people, 20,000 homes. Shale gas wells now sit 100 yards from the water's edge. We have pictures, you can see this. The mere risk, not the actual accident, the mere risk of losing our water supply has already decreased our home's value at least, at least, conservatively, 10%. Multiply this by 20,000 homes I mentioned earlier, and that equals a direct decrease of home values of $200 million. That's in our watershed alone. Now, multiply this by 100 more shale-impacted watersheds that are about the same size, and you have $20 billion in PA alone. And that's a, 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 a short estimate of only 10% decrease. Now, that's just a risk. If fracking accident poisons the reservoir, home values will reduce, again, conservatively, 50%. That's $1 billion per watershed law. Thank you. A good scientist is going to work to disprove. Just one, I just want to make a remark. We were talking about this. Okay, so it's 942. Uh, we've been through the whole of the list, and there are 40 more people who have signed up. Uh, I'm not sure that we have to. Uh, we have all night. <laughs> Will you have the trust fund to cover any damages from 
future migration of your toxic storage site. Will you leave it to your leave to your heirs money and responsibility or just the money? To the industry benefactors that are still here, can you articulate the reasoning for drilling protests or have you taken the convenience of not seeking the truth? If you look for the truth, you'll find it. To the drilling protesters, you have a vision. This movement is shaking your windows and rattling your walls. Give up your day job. Devote yourself to all the movements right now. And to the people here with the watch list looking for environmental terrorists, up yours. <laughs>
is to volunteer, is to abdicate the very purpose and the strength of government agencies. That is to regulate. When there is an explosion in a Bell PA, DEP only requested that the companies voluntarily adhere to best practices, and they encouraged them to control the hydrocarbons. Fracturing is out of control. There have been hundreds of documented spills, leaks, seeps, overflows, and blowouts in PA at well drilling sites and at wastewater reservoirs over the last five years. It's contaminated groundwater and streams with chemicals and gases. This is an industrial activity that can destroy the character of our communities. We are an informed citizenry, and our rights to clean air and water is granted to us by the Constitution of PA is being violated. Absolutely. 
are they going a long way to try to fix those, and mitigate those, and they're making progress? Absolutely. So what I ask everybody is that um, I admire and respect the public discourse, and I think it's very important. I, I'm glad to see the public engaged here. But I respectfully request that we, we rely on rigorous science and engineering to um, solve these problems and not ideology and hyperbole. Thank you. I want to thank the advisory committee for being here today. Uh, my name is Barry Sanary, and I am a resident of Vanderbilt, Pennsylvania, in Fayette County. It's about 30 miles southeast of here. I'm employed as an economic development manager for the Fayette County Economic Development Council, the lead economic development agency for Fayette County, Pennsylvania. Our mission is to maintain and increase employment opportunities in Fayette County in an effort to improve the quality of life for all of our citizens. I appreciate this opportunity to speak in favor of the Marcellus Shell gas industries and the critical role that America's natural gas will play in fueling the nation's economy while significantly reducing our dependence on foreign oil. I support the safe and environmentally sound extraction of this natural gas resource. The benefits of gas production in the Marcellus Shell are enormous and couldn't come at a better time. Over the past couple of years, over a dozen Marshall Shell companies have set up operations in our county, resulting in hundreds of new jobs and nearly $200 million of private investment. Names like Chevron, Williams, Calfrac, Universal, and Holland, just to name a few. I work with these people every day. They are friends and neighbors. They, they maintain high values in the way that they conduct business. They respect the law, protect the environment, and benefit the communities they operate in. Natural gas is the cleanest, safest, and most affordable fuels available to us at this time, and the development of the Marcellus Shell will make it even more affordable. I want this committee to know that we support Marcellus Shell drilling. Stopping or even slowing this natural gas exploration would have serious consequences on our county as well as the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Thank you for your time. The next commenter is Jeff Miskis, followed by Susan Oliver, David Fordridge, uh, Fordridge, and Michael Pappas. Hi, thank you for coming here. Thank you for allowing us to speak. Thank you for staying on. I live here in, in Washington County. My community is called Peters Township. We're a home rule community. We are governed by a charter. Our community does not like this here. We did not buy our homes to live in an industrial park. That's what this comes down to for me. We have no regions within our community that are zoned industrial, none. We have very small, very slithers of, of, of land that are zoned as light industrial. For, since June 14 last year, our group, PTMSA.com, which stands for Peters Township Marcella Shield Awareness, has held a poll. And we have contacted thousands of people, 80% of both Democrats and Republicans, do not want drilling in our township. And they're going to have the opportunity to vote in November. If they want this charter change, we're going to ban it. Is my time up yet? 30 seconds. So I'm asking you, the biggest problem we got is education. Our council members are terrified to talk against this because they could personally be sued. They won't, they refuse to educate the public as to what's coming on. The people in this room, like Bob Dunnan and, and Veronica and everybody, they know more than you know. Right. We know more than our council members know. That's right. That's right. That's right. And, the, and the population, the residents, they know nothing. We've got a pipeline coming through, and one pipeline company that's also a midstream operation, and I bet you guys probably don't even know what a midstream operation is. But anyhow, this, this company is putting in a pipeline and the neighbors don't even know about it. And one company's already got given a domain. 
is what we got PC authority here. Educate your populace. Let your council members, your rolling authority, to educate their people. That's why these people, the past years, wrote, signed into leases because they didn't know what they were signing into. Thank you. My family has been in Pennsylvania for over 100 years. And as a resident, a landowner, a mother, and a grandmother, I come to you today to share with you my experiences of working with Williams. I found the folks at uh, Williams to be very professional, very dedicated. And as other members of the industry have come up and talked about, we are dedicated to safety. That is our number one priority. Along with that, it is our responsibility to the environment and to the communities. As the corporate communications representative for Williams, I work closely with uh, outreach and community discussions and engaging with different groups as to hearing about their concerns. When folks say that we don't care, it's because either they close the door on us or they're not willing to listen. And we've actually approached different environmental groups. We work closely with the state regulatory agencies. We work closely with the county emergency management and the fire departments and first responders to ensure that should something happen, that we all know what to do. And because we are not perfect, we do make mistakes as an industry. And we acknowledge that, but we are working hard at it. We do take the best practices available, both within our company and as we learn from one another. And we have amazing technology and capabilities to develop our natural gas resources in a safe and responsible manner. So I can assure you that from my perspective, as an employee, as a mother, as a grandmother, and a resident and landowner, that as we work together to develop this great resource for our country, we will do it safely and reliably. Buy out the home.
politeness to the people who are speaking to her. So I ask everybody to try to keep that in the hall here so that you can hear the speaker and have give them the opportunity to speak as others have had before. Them. So please. My name is Mark Simon. I'm a proud resident of Washington County. This advisory board, as everybody knows, is charged with making recommendations to improve the safety and environmental performance of natural gas hydraulic fracturing from shale formations. This responsibility ultimately involves regulating the oil and gas industry. Now, how many of you people on this board have the potential to be personally and firstly affected by Marcellus gas development? I bet that the answer would be none of you. How can you relate? You can't. You simply can't. It's extremely vital to have effective parties as well as independent experts with absolutely no ties to the industry represented on this advisory board. First-hand experiences are an invaluable resource for formulating proper and appropriate safeguards relating to our freshwater supply, ground and air quality environments, lifestyle and property values. We are currently, what we currently have here is a group of individuals, six out of seven of these individuals on this DOE committee have extremely strong loyalty and deep financial ties to the oil and gas industry. In my opinion, to have this current group of individuals act as an advisory panel is both inappropriate, a total farce, and a conflict of interest, to say the least. It's like the fox guarding the hen house. Yeah. Yeah. As such, I call all of you on this committee with any ties to the oil and gas industry to immediately resign your positions on this board so that a proper, fair, and impartial new board can be appointed. Once this new impartial board is in place, then and only then can it get down to the proper business at hand of wholeheartedly and impartially safeguarding our health, vital interests, and rights to clean water and air without interference and influence from the oil and gas industry. Yeah.